I think it's time to rethink your bone health. I think there is a certain conversation that people can have very easily and talk to me about things about bone health. And unfortunately, when I have that conversation, even with healthcare practitioners, often it's riddled, if not totally inaccurate and inappropriate. So I believe that it's my duty to try to give you the right tools and information to help you make decisions that are relevant to your own health. And that is in this case, your bone health. Welcome to the Daily Dose with Dr. Mitch. I'm Dr. Mitch, I'm the Chief Medical Officer of Q-Light USA. I wanna first go back and just tell you that the expression or the disease that you heard called osteopenia is a fairly new term. It was coined in 1992 by the WHO. Osteoporosis was actually that term in 1994. And you could say, wow, those are fairly new terms. And I did that because I need you to get into the mood for understanding everything that I'm going about to tell you, which is, again, opposite of what you thought. The definition made by the WHO was if you had a bone density that was 1 to 2.5 standard deviations from the norm, keep that word in mind for a minute, then you had either osteopenia or osteoporosis. Basically, it was assigned an arbitrary standard deviation. Now, for any of you that know math, Standard deviation is just take this number, whatever the norm you decide, and if you're here or here or too far, then you're not normal. And we're going to give that a name, and in this case, a disease. But where did the norm come from? And does it really hold water? Well, the norm came from one doctor who basically came up and said, okay, if you're this far or this far on a bone density test, then you have one of these diseases. So bone densitometer testing or bone density testing, when you talk about if you're not normal, who and what are they comparing you to when you do this test? I think that's the first thing that makes sense. So most of the time or the scoring that allows a doctor or someone to say you have the disease osteopenia or osteoporosis, is based upon a statistical analysis called a T-score, T as in Tom. Now, a T-score is comparing you to a 30-year-old Caucasian individual. So how is that going to be accurate? And not only that, but what makes you think that as you get older, there aren't changes in the bone? Well, there are, we know that, from physiology function of the human body. But a Z-score like Zorro compares you to someone else that is your age. Now, which do you think would be more accurate comparing you to a 30-year-old Caucasian or a score that compares you to someone that's your age? I get the answer. So let's make some sense of this if it's easy, even possible. In 2009, in the Journal of Osteoporosis, they found that 30 to 39 percent of the individuals diagnosed with a t-score when they recalculated these 30 to 39 percent of those diagnosed with t-score well the z-score used well now wait for it that's right they were normal so here's the real problem people try to equate bone density with strength and that's not necessarily true so even if you fall in a category that suggests a certain disorder that they're trying to do with this test, you have to now think of a certain example. The one I love is the spider web. The spider web has literally hardly any density, but the tensile strength of steel, because anything that flies into it gets caught in it, right? Consider the example of wood. Wood is pretty much has a less density, but is extremely strong. Glass, on the other hand, could have a very strong density, but could easily shatter. I think you get the concept. And also, if you add on that this particular test is still, even though it's a low source, it is a source of radiation to your body. And since there's not one study that shows even the slightest amount of radiation is okay, and in the wrong situation, that small radiation cause a problem, 
I think you're getting the add-on and what the problems exist with a test like that. By now, about the fact in these different studies, you should also know, and this is the clincher that I like, higher than normal bone density women, actually, depending on who you read, have anywhere from two to three plus times more breast cancer. Hmm. I sometimes ask, if I gave you five seconds to answer, would you really like a high bone density or do you want uh, breast cancer? Yeah, people will say, you know what, I'll, 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 I'll take the osteoporosis diagnosis. And certainly that makes a whole bunch of sense to me as well. There is a urine test that you should consider. There's no radiation. It's a test called N-teleopeptide. It's a test that I use often in patients that can tell if there's a movement of calcium in and out of the bone, which would mean the bone is, you know, remodeling. And it does suggest if there is problems. Well, let me go through a summary for you because I think the summary is going to help you to make a decision what way to go this year when you're told time to get your bone density checked and time to figure out whether you have osteopenia or osteoporosis. Okay, bone densitometry, also known as the DEXA scan, which is presented to you to do, primarily measures bone mineral density, which by the way, is only one aspect of bone health. It does not provide a comprehensive assessment of bone strength, as it does not consider the bone quality or the microarchitectural. Okay. Bone mineral density alone does not accurately predict fracture risk either. Many individuals with normal bone mineral density can still have a fracture and vice versa. Bone densitometry does not account for other factors that contribute to burn bone strength, such as bone turnover rate or collagen quality when bone geometry and the reliance on this bone mineral density measurement often and does leads to overdiagnosis, overtreatment, and some individuals with low bone mineral density may be prescribed medications unnecessarily. I don't have to tell you, you can easily go online to the physician's desk rest reference, look at the drugs that are being suggested and their potential problems, everything from jaw fractures, increase in pancreatic carcinoma, etc. Look it up and then you'll know yourself. And of course, why, if not necessary, would you expose yourself to potential side effects? Medications prescribed on bone density measurements may not ad address and often don't at all the underlying causes of bone loss. Basically, it's designed to make the bone density test look better. Oh, uh, what? Basically, what you're doing by taking these medications that are so often prescribed is to make sure that when you take another test, it looks better. Yeah, that doesn't mean the function or the strength is any better. That's correct. And things like hormonal imbalances, nutrient deficiencies, or lifestyle factors are totally ignored. Bone densitometry does not differentiate between different types of bones, such as trabecular, and cortical bone. By the way, trabecular bone is responsible for absorbing impact forces. It's more critical for bone strength than cortical bone. So are we measuring the right thing? Well, next time we're gonna take a deep dive into the treatments that make sense and others that make no sense and may actually and could cause you harm. If you like our content, please hit the subscribe button below and of course the notification bell because that's going to let you know when more content is being added. We definitely enjoy doing this for you. This is Dr. Mitch's Daily Dose. I'm the Chief Medical Officer for Hue Light USA. Thank you so much for watching.